Hello friends, my name is Dheeraj Vaidya from wallstreetmojo.com. This is part 16 of our ratio analysis video series. In this installment, we will learn all about net fixed asset turnover ratios. In simple terms, the net fixed asset turnover ratio means how much revenue the company earns on the tangible assets, that is the property, plant and equipment. In this tutorial, we have basically four things to focus upon. Number one, understand what net fixed asset turnover ratio means. Number two, it's formula and calculations. Number three, we'll calculate net fixed asset turnover ratio for Colgate case study. And number four, it's interpretations and uses. So before we jump into the tutorial, a quick reminder, we will need the working files of Colgate case study for this video. So if you haven't downloaded it yet, then please do so from the description link below. And to keep yourself updated with the investment banking and core finance concepts, Please do subscribe to our channel, Wall Street Mojo. So let's get started. What is net fixed asset turnover ratio? Net fixed asset turnover ratio is actually a part of the ratio analysis framework and it comes under the operating efficiency category. In our last video, we discussed about asset turnover ratios. And if you look at the net fixed asset turnover ratio, there's only a slight difference. This is the net fixed included here, right? So what was uh, asset turnover ratio? Asset turnover ratio actually told us how the company is able to utilize its assets to generate sales. So how efficiently are they doing that? Uh, so it, it came into the asset turnover ratio. But the key here was that when we considered the assets of the company in the asset turnover ratio, we included all types of assets like the current assets, which had the cash and cash equivalents, marketable, marketable securities, account receivables, inventory, etc. So the current assets was included. Now, the second part is the property, plant and equipment that the fixed assets, you know, that was also included. And the intangible assets like property, sorry, the copyrights or the trademarks, etc. That was also included as the total assets. And in addition to that, you know, goodwill, which also forms a part of the intangible assets was also included here in the asset turnover ratio. So all in all, we included the total assets here, right? But when we consider the net fixed assets, we say that only the tangible assets of the company should be included. And uh, net fixed assets turnover essentially means how much amount of uh, sales the company is able to generate from its tangible assets. Okay. So if you look at the balance sheet, we essentially are talking about the property, plant and equipment, uh, you know, uh, uh, line item within the asset category. So they, these are the tangible assets to look at. Another thing to look at here is that where we consider net fixed assets depends on the industry. Uh, we, you cannot really literally apply this in services industry, for example, where net fixed assets is very, very low, as in they don't own lots of assets, right? But when you compare it with uh, other industries like manufacturing or automobiles, they are the ones who have invested a lot in their property, plant and equipment. So you basically consider this in manufacturing companies, automobile, energy, utilities, etc. So anything which is which demands high capital expenditure, in its assets, those are the companies, you know, for which you can actually calculate net fixed asset turnover ratio and do a meaningful interpretation. So, uh, but you cannot do that for asset like companies, like there are technology companies which don't invest in assets. You can't consider those services industry as well. So that's the key difference. Now let's come to the formula. The formula for the net fixed asset turnover will essentially remain more or less similar in the numerator we have the net sales and in the denominator is, is there is a slight change here here it is the average net fixed assets okay so uh, you can assume that net fixed assets is uh, usually the property plant and equipment that is found on the balance sheet okay so that's that's how you can find out what the net fixed assets of the company are. So this is uh, the major difference. And let us now look at the calculation of net fixed asset turnover with the help of an example. So uh, here is the same example that I will use, uh, which uh, 
we did for the asset turnover ratio. So uh, in this case, we found out that the asset turnover ratio for company A was 2.375 and company B was 1.56. So for a quick uh, refresher, I'll just uh, revise this once again for the sake of those who are looking at this video for the first time. So here we have the gross sales and the sales discount. So what we do is that in order to find the asset turnover ratio, we need the net assets, net sales numbers, right? So the net sales numbers are gross sales minus the sales discount that comes out to be 9500. And uh, we've been given the assets number as well. So here we, in order to find the average assets, we just need to add these two and divide it by two, or you can use this average formula as well. So we found out the asset turnover ratio and we concluded that company A is much better than company B because on that asset turnover basis, company A is able to generate higher sales, $2.3575 per dollar of asset, right? As compared to company B, which only generates dollar $1.56 of sales per dollar of assets. Okay, so now uh, we will look at calculation of net fixed asset turnover. And for that, uh, we will need the net fixed assets number. So let's assume that we have this property, plant and equipment numbers for the start and the end of the year. Okay, so that's the only addition which I will do in this example. And as you will note that in the balance sheet, you will get this number PPE, property, plant and equipment, right? So let's assume that this is uh, 2000 and this is 3000. Okay. And uh, for company B, it was 1000 and 2000. Okay. So uh, let's calculate the net fixed asset turnover ratio. For doing that, the formula is net sales divided by average net fixed assets, right? So how much is the average net fixed assets? The average of next fixed net fixed assets is the average of these two numbers, right? So property, plant and equipment start and end. So we'll find the average. This comes out to be 2500 for uh, company A and comes out to be 1500 for company B. Net sales numbers, we already have it here. And we have the average net fixed assets here. So the calculation should be fairly simple. Net fixed asset, sorry. Net fixed asset turnover. This will be equal to net sales 9500 divided by 2500. So this comes out to be 3.8. And for company B, this comes out to be 5.2. So as you can see here uh, that we have a totally opposite situation to look at. On one side, the asset turnover ratio of company A was higher. And on the other side, the net fixed asset turnover ratio of company B is higher, right? In terms of interpretation, what we can say here is that Company B is doing exceptionally well in order to generate sales from its fixed assets. What this is essentially could mean is that for company B, maybe a lot of assets is blocked in um, intangible assets, maybe you know goodwill or uh, trademarks or uh, legal rights or um, maybe in current assets as well. So uh, that's where the lot of assets are kind of uh, blocked. And uh, if you only consider the net fixed assets, that's where they are really doing good. So if this was an industry, which was, let's say a manufacturing setup, uh, we would have considered and came to the conclusion that uh, company B is doing much, much better as compared to company A. All right. So that's how you interpret the net fixed asset turnover ratio. And let's now uh, calculate Colgate's uh, net fixed asset turnover ratio and see what it means. So here is the balance sheet of Colgate and I want you to scroll down to row number row number 121. This is where we will calculate the net fixed asset turnover ratio. So uh, in our earlier video, we calculated the total asset turnover ratio. Now we'll calculate the net fixed asset turnover ratio. So for that, we require the net sales numbers and the average net fixed assets 
for the calculation right the net sales numbers come from the income statement and the net fixed assets will come from the balance sheet all right so let's link it and calculate the ratio here we go we will have to link it from the income statement and we are provided with the net sales number for 2017 this is 15454 divided by the average of your net fixed assets so let's look at the balance sheet and see what is the net fixed assets of the company so if you look at the balance sheet of colgate you will find that within the total assets there are this current assets property plant and equipment goodwill other intangible deferred income taxes other assets so we will be only looking at the property plant and equipment these are the tangible assets to consider in this calculation okay so please note the key difference between the total assets and the net fixed assets so here this is the net fixed asset which we need to consider this is 3840 plus 4072 divided by 2 so that's the average of this two number for december 2017 year end okay so let's look at what the ratio comes out to be this is 3.91 now let's copy and paste the formula for the other years too so what we note here is that uh, the net fixed asset turnover ratio for colgate is increasing year over year okay it was 4.11 in 2019 and then it jumped to 4.41 so it seems like uh, Colgate is doing a great job in terms of, uh, you know, their net fixed asset turnover ratio and how good are they doing? We will have to compare this with the industry. So uh, in our case, we have been only comparing it with Procter & Gamble. So uh, let's, let's look at how much is the net fixed asset turnover for Procter & Gamble. I think the net fixed assets assets of Procter & Gamble is around dollar 20 billion. So these are rough numbers. Uh, I will still have to look at the exact number on the balance sheet, but you can consider that this is the average 20 billion dollars is their net fixed assets on an average. Okay, so if we consider this and uh, Procter & Gamble, we, this 71 is the sales figures. So this is the net sales of Procter & Gamble. So it, if you want to calculate the net fixed asset turnover ratio, that will be 71 divided by your net fixed asset, that is 20. So it comes out to be 3.55 here. All right. And the asset turnover ratio we had calculated earlier, this was uh, 0 0.60. We said the total asset, average asset is $118 billion. And uh, the asset turnover ratio was 0 0.60. So as you can see, you know, there's a huge difference in terms of asset turnover ratio and the net fixed asset turnover ratio of Procter & Gamble. So on one side, if we would have considered only these two as uh, the comparison parameters, it seemed like Colgate is doing much, much better job as compared to Procter & Gamble. But uh, when we look at the net fixed asset turnover ratio, we note that though colgate is doing a better job because it's able to generate dollar 4.41 sales per uh, dollar of net fixed assets but uh, procter gamble is also not uh, very much behind because it's able to generate 3.55 so that's how you can interpret this by comparing it with the industry and uh, i hope you understood what is net fixed asset turnover ratio how to calculate it and its interpretations I hope you found this video to be useful. Please do like and share. And if you have any feedback or want to suggest a new topic for any future video, then you may do so by writing about it in the comments section. Also, we come up with interesting videos on investment banking and core finance topics very regularly. So if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please do so by clicking on the subscribe button below so that you can get the notification as soon as we release the latest video. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a nice day. Thank you.